Hello, and welcome back to the Wolf's Den. We are the Order of the Green Hand, here to bring some clarity to a Song of Ice and Fire. How do the Targaryens control their dragons? George has kept this a well-guarded secret for years. And every time we think we've figured it out, we find a quote from George that pretty much obliterates whatever we thought we knew. But today, we're going to try our hand at making a quick hitter video that puzzles this mystery out. So, let's do this. When trying to build a compelling case for how exactly the Targaryens controlled their dragons, it seems particularly relevant to first discuss what they don't do. According to both common knowledge within George's world and an author's annotation George saw fit to give us to make sure that people knew this, the Dragon Lords of Old Valyria controlled their mounts with binding spells in sorcerer's horns. But the Targaryens don't need such tricks. They do it without them. So what does this tell us? that the Targaryens are special, even among dragon lords. The other dragon lord families had to use tricks to do what the Targaryens are capable of at birth. This brings us to the first major point that we'd like to drive home in this video. There's a difference between being the blood of old Valyria and being the blood of the dragon. In George's world, hundreds of thousands, if not millions of people, have the hallmark silver gold hair and purple eyes that set those of the blood of old Valyria apart from everyone else. But, as far as we know, having said characteristics doesn't seem to have much, if anything, to do with someone having the ability to be a dragon lord. In fact, this seems to be proven by House Valerion, a noble house in Westeros of Valyrian descent, that are not dragon lords. Then there's the city of Lys a place where a large portion of their population have external Valyrian characteristics, but there doesn't appear to be a dragon lord amongst them. In fact, Essos is quite literally littered with people who look like they could be dragon lords, but they're not. Initially, we thought dragon riders having some sort of skin-changing relationship with their dragons, allowing them to ride and control them, was the only logical explanation for how exactly dragon lords get the dragons to do exactly what they want them to do. But then we realized George was actually asked about this and his answer threw cold water all over that idea. There is no history or precedent for someone warging a dragon. There is a rich history of the mythical bond between dragons and riders. There have been instances of dragons responding to their riders, even from very far away, which shows it is a true and very strong bond. We will learn more about this. Keep reading. Based on this statement, warging, which is a form of skin changing, is not the answer. So, if it isn't skin changing, how do the Targaryens control their dragons? The bond between the Dragon Lord and their dragon that George described here is powerful. The dragon will respond to their rider from quote unquote very far away. And we've seen this already when Drogon showed up in Daznak's pit precisely when Danny reached her breaking point, almost as if they were somehow kindred spirits, and he sensed her need of him and answered the call. This brings us to an ancient claim the Valyrians themselves made. They told anyone who asked that they were descended from dragons and were kin to the ones they now controlled. Given the fact that prematurely born Targaryen babies often emerge from the womb looking like dragons, this claim should be considered true, even though it sounds kind of crazy. That can't be a coincidence. Normal premature babies look like babies, but smaller. They aren't born with scales and wings like their Targaryen counterparts. 
So I think it's safe to say that the Targaryens are kin to the dragons they control. This also makes sense when thought of in the context of how George elected to label Danny's relationship to her dragons. Danny is the mother of dragons, a title that implies a deep familial connection. Danny, being their mother, makes it so she has among the most powerful naturally occurring bonds in any world to her dragons without even adding magic into the mix. True Valyrian dragon lords being descended from dragons also helps explain why the dragon lord families instituted the custom of incestuous marriages, trying to keep the blood of the dragon as pure as possible, thus maintaining and or preserving the potency of their ability to bond with their dragons, while also ensuring that people born with a natural ability to bond with dragons doesn't become so commonplace that things get completely out of control. It also appears that some of these 40 or so Dragonlord families in Valyria weren't as diligent as others in this practice, and ended up needing spells and magic horns to do what they could once do naturally. This dragon blood potency variable would also help explain why some dragon seeds, and not others, were able to get on dragons without getting burned alive. The more diluted the blood of the dragon is within a person, the less likely the person is to be able to bond strongly enough with a dragon to survive trying to mount one. All of this seems a very strong indication that everyone who flew on Dragonback during the Dance of the Dragons had at least a drop of the dragon blood in them, even little nettles. Brown Ben Plum seems another example of someone who has just enough dragon blood in him for the dragons to sense kinship and be accepting of him. But getting back to the Targaryens, their ability to naturally bond with their dragons seems an indicator that their efforts to keep the blood of the dragon as pure as possible have been successful, and they're a higher caliber of Dragonlord family than some of the other families which I guess is fortunate for our purposes in the story. Their innate ability to bond with their dragons seems like it's going to come in handy when the time comes to fight the others. But that still hasn't completely explained how they control their dragons. After all, we're all related to quite a few people that we have no ability whatsoever to control. Well... That's because this familial bond between dragon and rider is merely the foundation from which this connection works. As noted earlier, George said that dragons will respond to their rider's needs from really far away, which seems an indicator that there is some sort of commingling of the spirits of the dragon and its rider that allows the dragon to sense its rider's needs. So, when George said that it isn't skin changing, he was right because the rider is never described as doing what we see Bran or John do, looking through the dragon's eyes. The dragon to dragon rider bond almost seems to work in the exact opposite manner. The dragon senses what the rider wants and acts accordingly. For instance, Danny wanted to get the hell out of Marine. She couldn't take it anymore, and Drogon showed up. If we go back and look at the histories, it seems likely that this is how it worked as well. Let's imagine that we are Aegon I flying over the Field of Fire atop Balerion. He looks down and he sees the Gardener Iron Fist charging headlong into his army and realizes that he needs to stop them before his entire army is wiped out. Balerion senses Aegon's want or need in real time and dives down and lights them up. It isn't skin changing because it's the dragon that's in the dragon rider's mind, and not the other way around. And without the literal kinship having the blood of the dragon gives the rider to the dragon, this isn't possible, and trying to mount a dragon in such circumstances is not going to go well for you. Okay, so let's sum this whole notion up. Having the blood of Old Valyria and having the blood of the dragon are two different things. The blood of Old Valyria is more of an outward appearance thing, and the blood of the dragon is something that's within you, that allows you to bond with a dragon. This bond is deep, and it isn't like skin changing, where the human is in the beast's head. It's the opposite. The dragon 
is in the rider's head, knows what he or she wants, and acts accordingly in real time.